We are going to discuss three cases of allelic interactions dominance, incomplete dominance, and codominance. Let's start comparing complete and incomplete dominance. To understand how it works, let's consider two alleles of a gene determining flower color, big R and little r. A big R homozygous plant is red flowered, while a little r little r individual is white flowered. If we hybridize these two parents and examine the F1, whose genotype is big R little r, the distinction between complete dominance and incomplete dominance is clear. In the case of complete dominance, a single big R allele is sufficient to confer the same red color found in the big R homozygous. With incomplete dominance, however, the single big R allele is no longer sufficient and a pink intermediate color results. Incomplete dominance thus produces three phenotypes, one corresponding to each genotype. The explanation for this is clear if we look at the molecular mechanism underlying each dominance type. Let's start with the big R, big R parent. In its flower, a colorless precursor is converted into a red pigment called anthocyanin by an enzyme encoded by the R gene. The little r allele does not encode a functional enzyme, and in the little r, little r plant, the precursor cannot be converted into the red pigment. In the heterozygote that display complete dominance, the large r allele specifies the production of active enzyme and either of the following scenarios applies. The big R allele manages to make more enzyme, that is, to compensate for the inactive one, or the enzyme is intrinsically so active that it can carry out the work of two enzyme doses without a reduction in pigment amount. In the case of incomplete dominance, enzyme dosage is limited. The reduced amount made from a single allele slows down synthesis and decreases the amount of pigment that is produced, resulting in reduced color intensity. Summarizing, with complete dominance, one dose of the dominant allele is equal to two doses. With incomplete dominance, one dose does less than two doses. We call the latter system dosage sensitive. To explain codominance, let's consider red blood cells. Their plasma membrane contains glycosylated proteins, of which a predominant one is called glycophorin. Glycophorin spans the membrane and dangles its amino terminus on the surface of the cell. The amino terminus carries many oligosaccharide chains which branch from the polypeptide like barbs of a feather. The very end of the amino terminus has antigenic properties that is, is recognized by the immune system and comes in two types, M and N. M and N amino termini differ by two amino acid residues. Each is encoded by a different allele of the L gene. LM encodes the glycophorin with the M antigen, and LN the glycophorin with the N antigen. Let's look at the three possible genotypes. LMLM results in the formation of M antigenic blood cells because only the M glycophorin is present. The heterozygote LM LN results in MN antigenicity because both glycophorin types are made, while the LN LN homozygote results in N antigenicity. As demonstrated with blood type, codominance results when both alleles contribute actively and often independently to the phenotype. Typically, both alleles have evolved to do something useful for the cell. By comparison, 
with incomplete dominance, only one allele contributes actively to the phenotype. For example, Bigar encodes an active enzyme that makes the red pigment, while little r is a defective allele that produces no protein or an inactive protein. While in many cases, such as Mendel's seven characters, a single dominant allele is sufficient, alleles that display incomplete dominance are dosage sensitive or haploinsufficient. In their case, one dose of gene product is not as good as two.